Hey guys, how you going? This is Billy Eat World again, and today we're going to take a look at some of the things that Insurgency Sandstorm does better than a AAA shooter. And what I mean by this is what it does that AAA shooters either can't or won't do that either the community expects or has been asking for. Now, with that being said, that doesn't mean I'm trying to say that Insurgency Sandstorm is entirely better than a AAA shooter, because in a lot of ways it isn't. But there are some things that it really does do well, things that have turned me onto the game, and hopefully will turn you onto it as well. Okay, so to kick off, the first thing I want to take a look at in this video is the topic of factions, and specifically the point that in Sandstorm you can actually play as a Middle Eastern militant. And I mean, the word insurgent is literally in the title, which in itself is pretty controversial, because for most people in the Western world, that's only a stone's throw away from the word terrorist. But that's because one of the things that the Insurgency dev team clearly prides itself on is realism, and part of that is acknowledging that the battlefields of the present day are asymmetric. And so that means they're not afraid to make Sandstorm something other than your typical superpower versus superpower shooter, which is something I seriously doubt we're going to see change in the AAA shooter world for quite a while. Also, to follow on from that point, another thing that's important to mention is that unlike most AAA shooters, Sandstorm isn't afraid to make weapons faction locked, which obviously could affect sales when it comes to the casual shooter community, but it is something that really appeals to the more hardcore fans of this style of game. Not only is it more realistic, but it also means that each team has got its own unique strengths and weaknesses, and it means you really need to play differently depending on what side you're on. And probably the most important point to make is that Sandstorm doesn't just dip its toe into this one like, for example, Battlefield Hardline did. There's no way to unlock weapons ever for the opposing faction. Now, another point I want to bring up is moderation, and I understand that this is potentially controversial, and it might not be something that everyone necessarily sees as a pro. But what I mean by this is that AAA shooters like Battlefield and COD, for example, have been pretty hesitant to add in communication features like proximity VoIP, which is something Insurgency has had for years. And sure, I can kind of understand why, because if you've ever played a game like Hold Fast Nations at War, you'd know that this feature can be abused and it can become pretty toxic. But I think the main difference with Insurgency is the feature has been there for so long now that people have gotten used to it. And I don't think the solution is avoiding the feature altogether. It's just making sure the community sees it as a worthwhile tool and not just something they can annoy other people with. Also, I think in general, it's just worth mentioning that indie developers, I think, are more willing to put in little features like this that AAA devs might feel would just overcomplicate the experience. And obviously, there's a bunch of ways that this applies to Sandstorm, but I think probably the best example, if you want to see this at its extremes, would be in a game like Armour 3. Because, and this is an important point, Insurgency, Armour, Squad, and games like that are designed to be unforgiving and to reward players for skill. And so where the AAA shooter franchises are becoming more streamlined and casual, indie devs like New World are still innovating and adding new features that push the skill cap even further. Now, to finish up, another really big point that I think sets indie shooters like Sandstorm apart from the AAAs is the fact that they allow for modding. Because a lot of these games, and especially Insurgency, which was a mod created years ago on the Source engine, came from the modding community to begin with. In the original Insurgency, for example, there were weapon mods and even whole new game modes. So you'd have to expect that these kinds of things will be back in Sandstorm as well. And that's something the AAA publishers have heavily regulated for a long time now. And it's the sort of thing that even if they do choose to support, they usually end up monetizing anyway. Not just that, but free community mods are only part of what we've seen New World support in the previous games. They've also developed their own full conversion mods as well. For example, you might have heard of the standalone game called Day of Infamy, which originally actually started out as a mod for Insurgency, but ended up being so popular they actually released it. And I think this is a really, really smart idea, because where have we seen this work before? Well, the big one to point the finger at is Counter-Strike back in the 90s, which was originally a mod for Half-Life. 
which ended up being probably even more popular than the original game and paved the way for not only the modern shooter genre, but also the Source engine itself, which, as we said earlier, was where Insurgency originally started. But anyway, guys, I guess that just about wraps up this video. So make sure you let me know what you think Insurgency does better than a AAA shooter in the comment section below. Also, you might have noticed I'm making a lot more Sandstorm videos now, and I'll be making quite a few more in the next few months. So if you've got any ideas for any topics you'd like to see in this series, make sure you let me know them down below as well. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and please feel free to check out the links in the description if you want to see any more of these videos. And don't forget, you can also find my Twitter and Discord links down there as well if you want to keep in touch with me. And as always, until next time, see you later, and have a good one.